I'm Mr. P, and this is Mr. P's PE Vodcast, making PE simple. In this vodcast, we will attempt to simplify the VCE physical education curriculum, focusing specifically on area of study two of unit three. Uh, this looks at food fuels and energy systems. Uh, the vodcast today is trying to simplify as much of the content as possible. It won't go into a lot of detail, but hopefully it'll make things much easier for you guys to understand. So let's get started. So this is the Unit 3 Area of Study 2 area we'll be looking at, Physiological Responses to Physical Activity. We'll be looking at Point 3, examining ways in which energy is produced via the three energy systems and the associated fuels. The information from today's podcast is taken from Nelson Physical Education VCE Units 3 and 4 5th edition. If you have another textbook, that's fine. But if you have Nelson, flip to page 115 and follow along. So we'll be looking at sources of energy for muscular contraction, specifically the roles of adenosine triphosphate and the food fuels. We'll also look at ATP resynthesis through the three energy systems and how the systems work together. So put simply, when we eat food, it provides us with energy to refuel our three energy systems, which we will discuss later on. Our food intake consists of three basic nutrients. Any ideas what they might be? If you thought carbohydrates, fats and protein, then you're right. Carbs are the body's preferred source of fuel, including bread and pasta. Fats are more concentrated and include nuts and margarine. And protein, which makes a small contribution to energy production, come in the forms of legumes, fish and eggs. These are what each of the nutrients is broken down into. Carbs, broken into glucose and stored as glycogen. Fats, broken into free fatty acids and triglycerides. And protein, broken into amino acids. These are digested, absorbed, and then either stored or used for energy. This energy comes in the form of adenosine triphosphate ATP. It keeps all of our cells, including muscles, going and consists one adenosine molecule and three phosphate molecules. To gain energy from ATP, a phosphate molecule splits off, turning it into adenosine diphosphate, ADP, and an inorganic phosphate. An easy way to remember this is the chemical prefixes mono di tri. ATP is constantly rebuilt to provide energy, as is shown by the diagram below. This rebuilding occurs when energy from the breakdown of phosphocreatine, PC or nutrients rejoins with ADP and inorganic phosphate. This process happens constantly to provide energy for muscular movement for physical activity. Glycolysis, the process of breaking down glycogen, occurs when each glucose molecule is split into two pyruvic acid molecules and energy is released. Now for a quick question. What do the terms aerobic and anaerobic mean? You'll have the time it takes for Usain Bolt to run 100 metres to figure it out. Gay, Powell, four, five, and six. They're away. Terrific start by Daniel Bailey. Usain Bolt, though, getting into his running. Here he comes. Usain Bolt, challenged by Tyson Gay. Usain Bolt, two minutes. Did you figure it out in time? Aerobic means with oxygen, and anaerobic means without. Pyruvic acid can undergo either aerobic or anaerobic glycolysis, with the anaerobic version leading to the fatiguing byproducts of lactate and hydrogen ions. The body is pretty picky about its energy. At rest, the body prefers fats over carbohydrates, but depending on the intensity of an activity, whether it's maximal or submaximal, this can change. To fully understand how food fuels affect energy production and physical activity, please review the contributions of carbs, fats and protein, as well as the glycemic index. Here's a quick activity. Pause the video and link the nutrients with the forms of energy. Here are the answers. Did you get them right? So there are three main energy systems, the ATP-PC system, anaerobic glycolysis system, and the aerobic system. They all work together to provide energy and start up at the beginning of exercise, depending on duration, intensity, the presence of oxygen, and the depletion of food fuels. Here are some more energy system facts based on exercise and ATP demand. The ATP-P system is anaerobic in nature, provides a rapid source of ATP for energy, relies on short chemical reactions and lasts for about 10 seconds. The 100 meter sprint is a great example of the ATP PC system working dominantly. The second of the anaerobic systems is anaerobic glycolysis. Despite supplying energy at a slower rate than the ATP PC system, it provides twice as much energy for exercise. Tennis is a sport in which anaerobic glycolysis is at times the dominant energy system. The aerobic system has the most complex chemical reactions to release energy provides 30 to 50 times as much ATP as the anaerobic systems and has no fatiguing byproducts. 
The marathon is an event that requires a well-trained aerobic system. The three energy systems work together in a sequential but overlapping manner and don't simply turn on and off. This graph shows the relative energy system contributions while cycling at 110% VO2 max. To consolidate the knowledge you've learnt in today's vodcast, we recommend you read the chapter on food fuels and energy systems in your textbook. Feel free to contact me on the email below if you have any comments, queries or feedback. This PE vodcast was created for the Bachelor of Sport and Outdoor Recreation at Monash University, Clayton, Victoria, Australia, spoken and produced by Stuart Pearson.